Robes, we all use them every single day, so sometimes it's easy to forget just how dangerous they can be. But by the time you've watched this program, one more child will have been hurt in a road traffic accident. It's winter, it's cold and it's wet and you're rushing to get home from school. But it's also getting dark, which means it's really difficult for cars to see you. And that's why more people are killed on our roads at this time of year than at any other. This is Sam, and this is the spot where he was run over in November last year. Sam was on his way home from school when he was hit by a car. He was so badly injured that he was off school for three months. I can't actually remember what happened at the actual accident, but I was told that a white van waved me across the road, and the car on the other side didn't see me, and they were going too fast to stop in time. I woke up in hospital a few hours later. I had several quite severe injuries. I had a broken leg, which had five pins through it, which had to be cleaned every day, which was very painful. Apparently, I could have died if it went a bit faster. And Sam's not alone. Every hour of every day, about four children either die or are seriously hurt in road accidents. Last year, 177 children were killed, and that means a lot of you growing up without brothers, sisters and friends. And that's what happened to Leah. Just over two years ago, her brother Tom was killed crossing the road. He was always really excited and always the one that made everybody else laugh. He was really good at sport, always laughing. He had loads of friends and he was always out. He'd signed up for two football teams and he wanted to get fit. So he came in from school and he went out jogging down the road near where we live. And it was as he was cr um, crossing the road to come back home that he was hit. I was at horse riding and my mum rang me and said that Tom had been in an accident and I just thought like he'd have broke his arm or something. And then about five minutes later my mum rang me and said that Tom had been killed. And I just like burst out crying and put the phone down on her. Do you know any more about what happened to the person who was driving the car, why he hit Tom? Because he was speeding. He was going a lot faster than he should have been. He got... Um, a £700 fine and a two-year ban from driving. I just don't think it's enough. Not really when he's took somebody's life, because after that he'll be fine, but my brother won't. I think he should have been locked up for life. It's more than two years now since Tom died. Tell me a bit about how you feel about it all now. For the first year or so, it felt like it only happened yesterday, but I think now I'm starting to accept it that I'm not going to see him for a while. And it's still not easy and it's still hard to live without, like when people at school are like, oh, I did this with my brothers and sisters. And I'm like, lonely really. And what would your message be to children watching this programme who are a bit daft on the roads? Before I just thought that it never happened to anybody in my family and that roads were never really as dangerous as the people thought they were. But now I'm just so aware of them and so aware of like the way people are driving and people not crossing the roads properly and people just taking too many risks really. The problem seems to be that no one, neither pedestrians nor drivers, ever think it'll happen to them, but it does. In fact, road accidents are the biggest single cause of accidental death among teenagers there is. And so to drum home the message, TV adverts have been used to warn you of the dangers on the road. Hello, children. This advert was first on TV 50 years ago, and since then, there have been many more. What about road safety? Before he crosses, he looks where he's going. Everyone should use the crossings properly. Tufty thinks of somewhere where there's a lollipop man. Keep looking and listening for traffic. We won't be there when you cross the road, so always use the... Green cross pound. When it's not light, where's something bright? But now, gentle warnings have been swapped for gritty and sometimes shocking ads. This accident is not real, but the situation could be. 
actors are playing the roles of the teenagers. That's quite disturbing, isn't it, that? I thought it was a bit scary because you, like, you didn't know that would have happened before. But now I've, le like, learnt my lesson and know what to do when I cross the road. It might have been me that got hit by the car, but it wasn't. So I better make sure that isn't me. I'll be more safe on the road now than I won't, like, drive my bike across when there's not a red light or anything. I'll go across on the green. The adverts are supposed to remind us all to be careful on the roads, but it's not just down to pedestrians. People driving cars also need to make sure they're safe and take care with their speed, but many don't, and that's why police often carry out speed checks like this. We're doing some speed enforcement on this road. We're right outside a secondary school. The speed limit along this road is 30 miles an hour, so what I'd like to see is traffic travelling at that speed. This is called a laser gun. In its basic form, it fires a laser beam, really, out of the front of the gun. And the gun is very clever because it then works out how fast that vehicle is travelling towards me. So does this car look like it's going a bit fast? And the speed of that vehicle is 42 miles an hour. So travelling at 42 miles an hour is extremely dangerous. The driver wouldn't be able to stop in time if I had stepped off of the kerb. Because a lot of children hear a lot about how it's their responsibility to cross the road safely, but it's not just their responsibility. No, it isn't. Clearly, we would like to see all drivers obeying speed limits. They're there for a reason. If a vehicle is travelling at 30 miles an hour, you have an 80% chance of surviving. If they're travelling at 40 miles an hour or more, then you've got an 80% chance of not surviving, in other words, of dying. So it's a very, very serious matter. This crash looks pretty nasty, though of course these aren't real people. But thousands of people are involved in car crashes like this every year. And that's why safety research centres like this one are so important. People working here carry out controlled crashes to test how safe cars are, both for pedestrians and passengers. The tests are done with this ball. It represents a person and is used to check what kind of damage a car bonnet would do in a crash with a pedestrian. How does this sort of work help prevent accidents? In itself it doesn't help to prevent accidents. The preventing the accidents is the job of the town and city planners that people design our roads to make sure they keep pedestrians and cars away from each other. But when there is an accident with a pedestrian, what this work helps to do is make sure the front of the car does as little injury to the pedestrian as possible. So what sort of features does a car like this have that help pedestrians who are hit by cars? What manufacturers are looking to do is reduce the areas where the cars are particularly stiff try and improve those, make them softer. The other thing as well is under the bonnet, which for a pedestrian hitting it is relatively soft, there are hard structures, the engine and bits and pieces, it looks to try and lower those or get those out of the way. Even simple things like covering the, where the windscreen wipers are, because they're obviously a hard, sharp point, so you either cover those with the bonnet or some manufacturers are looking ones that break away. And now some car manufacturers are designing new safety features in case a pedestrian is knocked over. This is a brand new Jaguar car and it's been developed with built-in safety sensors. The idea is that the sensors will alert the driver if a pedestrian is too close. And if someone is hit, the front of the car will lift up automatically. Which will stop a pedestrian hitting their head on the hard engine under the bonnet. It all sounds so simple and from a very early age we're all taught how to cross the road. But sometimes it can be easy to forget the simple rules which can stop us all from getting hurt or even worse. Firstly, remember to find somewhere safe you can cross, ideally a zebra or a pelican crossing. If not though, somewhere you can clearly see both sides of the road. Stop at the kerb and make sure you have a good look round in every direction. Also, listen out for any traffic you can't see. When you think it's safe, cross the road. Keep looking in both directions and remember, walk, don't run.
But even with all the TV warnings, the speed checks and the advice about safety, children like Leah and Sam are still suffering and even more needs to be done to try and stop children being killed and injured on our roads. Well, when we go out for dinner at school, I'm always like, holding on to my friends' arms and stuff so they don't walk out because I'm really, really nervous of the roads. I'm, I'm really cautious now about crossing that road because well, there's no safe place to cross, there's no crossings or anything. I try to spend more time with my mum and dad. I try not to argue with them as much because I realise life's too short to argue with people.